Hey there everyone, Broadway Biker here. I'm about to go get on my bike and head to work, but I thought as long as it is, hold on, 30 degrees, as long as it is below freezing, I thought it would be a super awesome opportunity for me to suit up, for us to suit up together perhaps, if you're gonna go out and bike in the snow or the cold today too. Just show you what I wear to stay warm, stay not super sweaty, stay comfortable, and arrive to work looking presentable. So, if you are ready to go out into the wilderness, or if you just wanna know what you should wear when going out into the wilderness, Keep watching this video. If you wanna see more videos about how bike commuting can be super awesome and how you can do it in the comfort of your own life, then maybe you should subscribe to this channel. Cause that's what all the cool kids tell you to do. So first step I always do, just because I have obviously hair that is long, is I always get this under control. If you gotta look nice, nothing will kill you more than having insane static electricity hair when you get to work. So I'm just gonna braid my hair really quick. Ta-da! Now when you get to work, you can just take it right out or you can leave it, your choice, and your hair will not look like a total mess. Moving on to step two, let's put some stuff on our body. Since it's only 30 degrees and will probably drop to maybe like 25 or so by the time I get back from work, I'm not super worried about wearing anything underneath my just outer shell. So normally when it gets below freezing, I normally like to wear some sort of long sleeve thing under my shell that I'll put on over top. It can be anything. It can be like a flannel. It can be a literal really light sweatshirt like this one is. It can just be a long sleeve shirt. It can be a button up. It can be anything. I wouldn't recommend wearing like an Under Armour kind of lower layer unless it's probably like 15 degrees or lower since it's just slightly below freezing. This is going to be just fine. So since it is rather sloppy and wet outside, I am definitely going to be partaking in the ski pant action. You don't have to have anything fancy. These aren't honestly even that waterproof. More importantly, they just act as a wind and cold breaker. So let's put these on. And we are good to go. I've got pockets. I normally put my phone in these pockets just because it's actually closer to my body heat than if I put it in the jacket pockets I found. And cold can kill your phone. Once it drops below freezing and you're outside, if you stick your phone in your backpack or something, <laughs> the battery will be very sad. So try and keep it as close to your body as possible. You could put it inside clothing pockets actually, as long as you're not sitting on it or anything crazy like that. So next we're gonna put on our shell. This is gonna prevent our clothes from getting wet. It's going to help us stay warm. It's going to be super bright and obnoxious when it is cold and no one expects bikes to be on the road in the middle of the snow times. Let's put it on. A real tragedy of bike riding is the wet butt syndrome. Anytime there's any sort of moisture on the ground, you know what I mean. You get the stripe up your back and it's just a sad day. It's a sad day. So awesome companies that make actually bike specific stuff. A lot of times we'll have this like expandable butt flap that you just shoop down, just sit right on it. And it protects your pantaloons from becoming super damp and sad. Let's put our jacket on. Ta-da! Another cool thing about jackets that you might want to look for is if they have little vents. Here's the zipper that I can unleash to reveal a hole. This is awesome to have options to kind of off-gas some of your heat because honestly, the biggest problem, contrary to popular belief with winter bike commuting, is getting too hot versus too cold. So it's really nice to have things that you can take off easily or things that you can do like the zipper here, just so in the middle of your ride, if you're halfway to work and you're like, oh, I'm so hot, you can protect yourself from one, looking like a sad mess, and two, uh, if your sweat cools, it will actually turn into a really sad, cold, blankety moisture situation that you don't want at all. Layers and ways of removing them are a super helpful thing when bike commuting to work. All right, so I got this like, I think it was called a buff. 
It's just basically a fabric tube. You could make one out of like an old t-shirt or anything laying around. All you would need to do is just sew up a seam and you have a tube. I really like just folding this guy in half and sticking it on my head like so. As long as it's not below 10 degrees or so, I really like having my head open so I can kind of steam off some of my heat through the top of my head. Today, I'm gonna to be rocking the ears forehead protection with a little bit of steam chimney action from the top of my head. Another thing that I like about this is that it's thin enough that my helmet fits under it really, really well. So let's put our helmets on. You might find at first that you have to adjust your helmet just a little bit to get it to fit. You still want it to be really snug though, just like you would normally. Obviously don't cut your circulation off, but keep yourself safe. And there you go. I know some people that use ski helmets when they're biking in the winter. You can totally do that. Do whatever is most comfortable for you. I just use the same helmet all year long because then I only have to buy one helmet. And I found that I can layer lots of different things to make one helmet work for all four seasons of the year. The next step is definitely protecting our eyeballs. So let's get a pair of goggles. Whoop. I am using some old uh, Smith ski goggles. Are you noticing a trend? You don't have to have fancy bike equipment to bike in the winter. You can have an old, really crusty pair of ski goggles that you wore when you were 12 years old. The thing with goggles is you really do want to have ski goggles. I've used motocross goggles before and those were horrible. They iced up instantly, I couldn't see anything. It was just not a happy day. I don't like using sunglasses either for the same reason that they fog instantly and I just get so much cold air inside my eyes that there's just tears and then I arrive looking like I have just killed someone or been killed by someone. Both I don't really want to show up to work looking like. So, ski goggles. The thing that I get why some people use ski helmets for is that they actually have like a little hook normally you can latch the band of your goggles into. I found though that you can pretty much slap goggles on any bike helmet. So you will want to make sure that your ski goggles are pretty tight. If they are not, you're going to have a lot of issues about fogging and you won't be able to see and then you might end up riding into a lake. Let's get to our destinations instead of going into a lake. Since it is below freezing, I want to cover my face. I personally do not have a giant plush beard to protect my face, so I will be protecting my face with the Broadway Biker patented t-shirt face protective method. This has never been done on camera before. All right. So you could skip this step if you have a balaclava, use that. Then you don't even need the earpiece, then you don't even need the face piece. I am a very cheap person. <laughs> and so for the past two and a half years, I have been using the t-shirt method to keep myself toasty and warm during the winter. And I'm actually really impressed with it. So all you do is you take a t-shirt, I would recommend using a pretty thin t-shirt just so you can still breathe um, and you won't get too much condensation piling up inside of your face mask. You could use a piece of fabric, um, anything that's thick enough to protect your face but thin enough that you can breathe. Then what we do is we're going to tuck it into the sides of our goggle straps. Once you've tucked in both sides, you should look something like this. Next, I take this top part right here and I'm gonna just tuck it in on the underside of my goggles. Tuck under for less steamage. Just make sure it's tight and you have a good seal and you'll be great. At this part, you might end up with some little loopies here on the sides. What I do is I just tuck those loopies like this right up into my goggle strap and now we have a very airtight package. The final step is to just tuck your fabric beard right on in to your jacket and zip it up. And that's that. Depending on how cold it is, you might want to leave an air vent in the back or you might want to pull the t-shirt all the way around just to protect your neck. 
Since it's only 30 degrees right now, I'm gonna leave kind of a little air vent back there. Here is my neck right here. Here's the top of my jacket and the t-shirt. I'm not going to pull all the way. I'm gonna just kind of leave it like this. So this portion of my neck is able to give off some of my body heat. Okay, the final step is hand coverings and shoes. And we are ready to go out the door and ride. I've got these here mittens. They're made by Burton. Here we've got some water resistant mittens, which is great for winter. I feel like trying to get your coat on the outside of your mitten as just a single person is like impossible. So if you have someone that wants to do the classic child into mitten coat over mitten maneuver with you, by all means do that. But since I do not have anyone to do that for me today, I'm just gonna use the palm grab. So just like grab it, just shove your hand into that mitten. Yoink. Ha ha, and there we go. No holes and no cold wrists. I will talk briefly about sockage. Wool socks are great. Wool is great in general. Um, but make sure you have like pretty okay socks, especially if your boots are not on the super thick side. The biggest part about biking, honestly, is that your pedals are metal, which kind of attracts all of the super coldness, which then sucks right on into the bottom of your foot. So either put insoles in or wear like pretty thick socks, or get boots that have a pretty hefty rubber bottom or something just to kind of stop all the cold from like sucking on into your foot and your toes falling off. Another thing that I'll say about your footwear is that make sure your boots or whatever you use has good traction. In the winter, if something goes wrong, your feet are your last resort emergency brakes. You need to jump off your bike. You've hit a giant thing of ice and you don't want to slam your brakes on. Your feet need to be there for you and the bottom of your boots needs to be able to stop you. Oh wait, I forgot something really important. Very awesome trick for you to remember is that when you're biking in the winter, um, it's, you know, cold outside, it's winter, it's below freezing. When you step out of your house, you should honestly feel a little bit cold. Like you should be chilled. You should be chilled. By the time you've been biking for one minute, two minutes, your body's going to warm up and that extra coldness you felt is just going to neutralize and turn into just a nice even keel normal warmth throughout your entire body the biggest thing is just layers be able to remove your layers be able to put on an emergency layer if needed i'm going to go outside now put on all my boot situation and let's go bike in the snow